this is week 11 yes. of the Crazy Beautiful Podcast, and I am so excited because today our special guest is Pastor Sharon A.G. Epps. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> of the A.G. Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and Sharon, again, is another friend that I haven't spoken to in forever. We sang in a singing group when I was a teenager called the Joyful Sounds and we traveled all around to different churches and um, like we were just talking about the Gospel Music Workshop of America that we all took the trip to and it was such a blessing because it was just a taste. Even though for me, like I said, personally, I did not have a relationship back then. But I, I loved being around. I knew that I loved the feeling of being around this group of people. And I was just, the AGs kind of took me under their wing like a little sister. So I'm excited. Oh, we have, is that Kiara? Kiara. Hi, Hi. Sharon. This is my sister, my little sister, Kiara. I don't know. You may not remember Kiara. Kiara, do you remember the AG sisters? Hello, hello. Hi, I remember a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but okay, yeah. So, so before we get rolling, we're going to go ahead and open up with prayer. Does anybody feel led to pray today? Anyone? Mom, pray. it's been a. Yeah. I haven't prayed in so long oh. for the group. <laughs> but I thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thank you for this time that you have allowed us in this day. I, first of all, thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. I thank you, Lord, for Sharon Agee, who has been uh, come in and she's going to share with us um, the blessings that you have blessed her with in her journey in life. And I thank you, Lord, for how you've blessed us all as we come together and looking to you and thanking you for all that you are going to enrich us with through your you know the way that you move lord mm-hmm. in your spirit in all of us so i'm excited that i'm excited about the ways that you move in all of our lives mm-hmm. and how you just you know you enrich us you give us you you lead us you guide us you you convict us and bring us into a position where you say okay now keep going yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we thank you lord and we thank you again for this day and we pray this in jesus in jesus name amen. 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 amen 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 now if you have been following the podcast uh for a while then you know that what we'll usually do when we have special guests is we open the floor to them and i just like to hear i like for people to share whatever they feel led by the spirit to share about their journey of where god has brought them from and things that god has brought them through um and so i'm going to give the floor to sharon and allow her to just go ahead and speak and we'll we'll just go from there amen Amen. so sharon if you (laughs) Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your podcast. I had an opportunity to uh, take a look, well, hear a lot of the uh, episodes um, and familiarize myself and also to subscribe. So uh, definitely congratulations to, um, to all of you. It's an awesome thing to have three beautiful women that um, are connected not only by blood, Mm. Um, but in the spirit, and so to be able to create something like this, a platform mm. for uh, others to come and be a part of this is definitely a powerful thing. So I definitely wanted to uh, thank you, but then also congratulate all of you on this journey. And I'm quite mm. sure it's going to impact um, many, many people as well as what it has already done. So I'm excited mm. about this particular episode and just being able to be a part of Yes, of your yes. journey uh, in this podcast, but mm-hmm. uh, when when you ask me to be a part of it, I mean, all of these different memories begin to flood <laughs> of us growing up <laughs> in the same <laughs> church and um, 
And then also with the community group, uh, singing group that we had. I mean, it was amazing yes. how uh, this one connection uh, or reconnection, if you will, uh, allows all kinds of memories just to start flooding your heart. And I became so yeah. excited yeah. Uh, just thinking about um, who you, you know, you were again, you know, that extra agey sister. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was amazing how you you were able to, Patrice, uh, in reference to just gluing with us, you know, you, yeah. you flow right with us. I don't know what it was. You know how I am. I'm a good time. I cut up. I love yes. to laugh. I love to make people laugh. But yes. I love to make people feel comfortable. And yeah. um, I do remember so many times, you know, you and I uh, and my sisters as well, we would all get together and just just have fun, just love yeah. life. We were, you know, young girls in the Lord and being taught and not really knowing where God was going to take us, but just enjoying the journey. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I appreciate those moments. Mm. I appreciate the mm. memories that were made because of our connection and our relationship and not really knowing a whole lot about me, you know, and I mm -hmm. really didn't know a whole lot about you. It's right. Like, it, was, it was just that unspoken, like, you know, you belong. Yeah. You know, you yeah. Belong and Crazy. So, Crazy. Uh, it's good to know that you, um, you're doing what you're doing. Uh, it, it lets me know that, you know, what was done in the past, um, you know, what God was doing, what he was connecting and, mm. um, instilling on on the inside of each and every one of us, yeah. it was going to blossom into some form of ministry. You yeah, know, not come everyone on. is called to the pulpit, right, but right. everyone is called to minister in some form. So I'm glad that yeah. it's not necessarily the pulpit, but it's a podcast. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so where I was called to the pulpit or whatever the case, you were called to the podcast. So that just, let's, it just brings my heart joy to know that regardless, it, it's important for each and every one of us to answer the call, whenever that call leads you. Come on, Sharon. Um, I'm not you and you're not me. Right. Right, but, but God gave us a uniqueness of our gifts and our calling where we can express who God created us to be yeah. in the place and in the vein for which he wanted us to express it. So I'm yes, definitely excited. Amen. And, you know, we got to hook up and do something, eat it, go out to eat. You yes. Know, to and <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joy uh, reconnecting and sharing some memories of what we um, definitely um, had, even as, as young experiences. Teenagers, you know um, what? Up in, in church, so. I was thinking after yeah. I. Because I was getting so excited about you coming on the show. And I was like, man, it would be so dope if the Joyful Sounds could do some type of, even if it was virtual, like. Even a couple of songs or something. I mean, you know, when we used to get together for rehearsals, rehearsals used to be a journey because we, we all, all these personalities, lots of talking, lots of joking, lots of poor Jeremy. But I mean, when we would sing together, it was so beautiful and anointed. So. It really was crazy beautiful as a show. Yeah. It really was. It was crazy times, but it was beautiful worship. It was beautiful yeah. praise. God got the glory regardless. He did. He but did. But he definitely had a handful of personalities. Yeah. With, um, including my own. Yeah. Never good. Uh, <laughs> if you ever want your program, your event to go left, I am that person. What? So, um, <laughs> We welcome that. Like yes, we, we welcome that. You will have fun. You'll have fun. You'll learn a lot. But I'm I'm that left. I'm that yeah. left. Yeah. So, um. So thank God for the grace on His life. So Girl. To deal with me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, I am excited about the journey that God has uh, has led me on. You know, in these last twenty some years. Uh, of my life um it definitely has truly that's why i love the name of this podcast crazy mm -hmm. beautiful it's yeah. only because it really does describe a lot of people's lives and, yeah uh including my own and so in listening to your previous episodes and the different people you have on powerful powerful testimonies mm -hmm. uh it caused me to really just go back and thank god and be grateful for Shh. which he's brought me from Mercy. and everybody um in their life, you know, you have defining moments. Yeah. And I have to say that in my life, 
so far, it has been five major defining moments. Okay. And whether those defining moments started out great or crazy or beautiful, mm. uh, it all ends up working out for your good. Yeah. And so Amen. in my journey, um, you know, I, I always uh, look at my life from a couple of M's, the, word, the letter M. And so it's me, then there's a mother, mm. and then there is the minister. Mm. And then there's a mentor, but then there's a misery. Mm. And so I wanted to really just bring those five defining moments. Every woman has a crown, mm. um, and it needs to be adjusted at times. Yeah. And those five defining moments adjusted my crown to a place where I'm able to be who I am today by the grace of God. Amen. So in talking about me, I, you know, like I said, the first M is me. And so who I am, I'm, I'm very fun loving. I love to laugh. I love to make people laugh, but mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. Um, the, the medicine, the healing that takes yes. place with laughter. In laughter. But even in my delivery, a lot of times through my messages, I love to bring that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I didn't realize, at the, you know, at the age of five, when I went to, went back in my life, uh, at the age of five, I was always, in a sense, aware mm. of this this, um, this anointing to mm. attract people to my boys. Wow. And I couldn't explain it. Right. I couldn't understand it at that time. Right. But I was very aware of it. Okay. So a lot of times when I spoke, people listened and I found myself looking like, oh my gosh, I, I was having a conversation, but the whole room stopped. Yes. So even at age of five, mm. you know, people had a tendency to listen when I spoke. Adults, mm. children, whatever case, wherever I was, and I didn't understand that. And it was something initially where I was scared wow. because I'm like, I was just talking to my aunt or I was just talking to my friend. Yeah. I didn't know the whole room was listening. Wow. And so it wasn't until I became older that I understood the anointing to attract people to hear what I had to say. But mm. it was God's calling on my life to really and truly uh, be that minister that he called me to be. Wow. And so um, that was a, an amazing thing. And so every place I go, every thing that I do, I bring me to the table. And so mm. I have to say to your listeners, it would be bring, bring you to the yes. table, bring you to every yes. event, bring you to uh, every um, situation. You want to bring yep. the original you. You want to bring yep. the authentic you. Amen. And, and I didn't realize that um, what was, what is truly a blessing to attract people to me or whatever the case was also what the enemy wanted to use as a weapon. See, now? And so, at mm. five years old, um, in addition to being raised by my mom and, and uh, you know, my great-grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, all of them are, are you know, were in ministry in some form. Okay. And so I was, like, I was the firstborn, and I was to carry the legacy of ministry of the women in, our, in my family. Okay. Uh, so, at the same time, I'm following my grandmother to church services and getting communion service ready mm, and mm. pouring the juice in, <laughs> in the container. Oh, he was getting you, you ready. Know, getting all the elements <laughs> together, even at five years old. Wow. Um, due to the fact that my mom working um, very hard and um, out of the home quite a bit, she had she left us a lot of times with babysitters. Mm. And I now never forget my first experience and this is how the enemy can use what you what you have as an anointing on your life to try to twist it yeah and so i had the ability to attract people to me but i i didn't realize that i had to have a discerning heart mm. to know who was coming to me yeah yeah and so the female babysitter it was three female babysitters that were attempting to groom me and molest me oh my gosh and so my my ability my ability to attract you to me oh, to wow. enjoy my company mm. turned against me. Wow. And I believe still to this day, 
not really understanding all of the details, and I think a lot of it has been suppressed, but I, it, it, I don't know how far it went. Wow. But I knew that I was in an environment where um, I was being, I was around toxic. Women. Yeah, mm-hmm. you knew someone, right. And uh, so it left me with an identity issue of mm. under, trying to understand wait a minute, this is a woman coming towards me trying to show affection. Wow. Uh, and all these different things. And, um, and then it was like not just one babysitter, but then here comes another one, and then here comes another wow. one. And I found myself saying, what is it about me yeah. that is attracting these level, this level of, you mm. know, toxicity, not knowing it to be that then at right. that age. Right. But one of the things I realized is, you know, in that, with the call on my life, my grandmother was, uh, uh, you know, grooming me for ministry, if mm. you will. Mm-hmm. But then you had another woman trying to groom me for another type of thing. Wow. And so I had to realize wow. that, uh, you know, um, as I became older, I became angry. There was a lot of frustration yeah. in my, you know, when I went to school, couldn't concentrate because I had two voices mm. talking to me at the same time. Mm. Right? Mm. Um, and so as I became older, I became more aggressive. Yeah. Um, and, and I've always been one that loves sports. I, I'm a sports fanatic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, I like to play some sports. The things that they, mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, no, I just said I like to play some sports. I'm not a watcher. I'll, I'll, I'll watch. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So I, I love to do both. And so, um, you know, that was one of the things that, uh, again, it was used against me. My love for sports and different things. I was a tomboy, and um, I, I still see myself as that a lot of times. Not so much in a negative light. Right. Um, so I don't want to say like, oh, tomboy in a negative light. But I found myself loving a lot of things that are not girly girl. Right. 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 And so right. that was, in a sense, the bait that was used to try to get me to get on a different path. Right. Um, right. Gotcha. But God. But God. Yeah. The crazy, yeah. Beautiful of it. But God mm-hmm. brought me out of that, and I actually answered the call of God on my life at wow. a very young age, age of 16. So when you and I were um, growing up in the, in the church together yeah. during those times yeah. uh, is when I actually answered the call. Wow. So even in that, he stopped the process mm. of what could have been very dramatic, very wow. uh, off-kilter, could have yeah. destroyed yeah. Uh, my life, he allowed the call to pull me out. Wow. Of the cycle of anger, the cycle of confusion mm. and identity, not understanding who I am. Um, wow. And I went off to college. So that that was that's me, right? Yeah. But then the next M, right, is the mother. So I went off to college and I started off going uh, to Morgan State University and I was going into pre-med. Okay. But then there was a shift that came where he said, that's not what I, where I called you. I called you to preach. I called you to minister. And so I want you to go into counseling. I want you to go into psychology. And mm. so I changed my major. And one particular morning, I'm on my way to class at 9 o'clock a.m. in Baltimore, Maryland, mm. walking from my car. I see three men, uh, three boys approach me. And, I mean, this is early morning. So my, my guards are down. I'm reading. I'm right. walking across the street, and next thing you know, they pull out a gun, <gasps> right? And they say, give me your bag. Give me everything you have. And I'm like, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Ne- I mean, That's definitely. crazy. The guards are down, right? Yeah. Um, and he, he, he takes the gun, and he points it towards me. And when he points it towards me, he literally pulls the trigger, but nothing happens. His <gasps> eyes become huge. Because in his wow. mind, wait a minute, I know I loaded this. Wow. I know um, this should have gone a different way. Mm. So they became scared. I mm. threw my bag, you know, towards them. They literally ran. Wow. I went to the police station. And as I get there, the the officer said, um, we need you to um, get a pap smear. And I said, no, 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 no. It wasn't. It wasn't right. It wasn't right, right. It was just them trying to rob me. I gave them, you know, my bag. And he was persistent in asking me um, to take this, you know, test. Mm-hmm. The passion and everything. 
take it to find out I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh. Crazy beautiful. Oh. <laughs> you don't. You're like. I had no, because I kept saying to myself, why are you asking? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It had nothing to do with my report. Wow. But it was God. God yes. Listen, I said, God, you don't have to rob me. Just, I mean, <laughs> I can. <laughs> Mary got an angel. Crazy I mean. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I promise you, because nobody, I, I'm, I was outraged. I was beginning to cry. And angry, yeah, with this man with this officer. Because I'm saying to myself, I did not get assaulted, I did not get sexually assaulted, right? Oh my god, and he was, and he was like, Boom, I'm Gabriel. Then, you know, You're like, Oh, you, this, today's vernacular was bro, right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with rape. Where are you going with this? Not knowing that God was using this man, girl, the whole time you were frustrated. <laughs> You were frustrated, and it was here. it was an angel the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Oh my gosh! That I was carrying a child. Wow! I had no idea. So the robbery and all these different things, the report to the police, something a, beautiful came out of that. Yeah, my daughter, Brittany. So yes, yeah. I was promiscuous. Yes, I was. You know, all over the place, drinking and. You know, drugs in college and all of that. Going to school, straight A's, go to the party, and come right back, take a test, and ace it. But all of that. Grace. Grace. <laughs> resulted in me, you know, blossoming into something that was, that you changed can. my very life, which is becoming a mother in mm. college. Mm. And so, I rededicated wow. my life back to God at that moment. Mm. Never turned back since that point. And my daughter was born, and the thing about it, even with my daughter's birth, and I said, her name is Brittany. I said, Brittany, I, I, even now I say to her, you have got to do something amazing. <laughs> because from the time I found out I was pregnant, to the time of giving birth, you are, is, is you Brittany dramatic? Through crazy. <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm serious. So I, I, my daughter mm. was born during a snowstorm. Wow. Uh, Wait a minute. And I had to walk to the hospital because the ambulance could not get there. Oh, oh I mean, my goodness. Ambulance. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. Is, and, is Brittany dramatic? Yeah. Is she dramatic? The, she's fair. <laughs> she's, I'm just saying, she wanted to make an entrance. She said, wait a minute. We need a robbery to let her know that I'm coming. Wait, we need a snowstorm. Right. I, I have That's no, crazy. I'm like, God, you know what? You're a sense of humor. You know I love to laugh, and you know I love to make people laugh, but you make me laugh. Right. <laughs> but I'm walking to this hospital, my oh boyfriend gosh. and we get there. She was born three days after Christmas. Wow. And the crazy thing was, um, none of the doctors, my own doctor, couldn't even really get to the hospital. Mm. But, um, till, until <laughs> the end. And so, Oh. My boyfriend says at that time, my daughter's father at that time, he says, I'll pay, he said, I bet you a hundred dollars um, if you can deliver the baby in an hour. Oh. Don't put me, don't put me in a challenge or a competition, right? Oh. So I turned it into something <laughs> sure. funny and crazy, right? And so at, oh listen, at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, I began pushing. Oh. Now remember, I was walking to the hospital. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was already in labor, so it was a little easier. Right, oh. right, At right. One, yes. o'clock, one o'clock, my daughter literally leaped out of me, and the doctor almost dropped her. Kiara. Yep. Oh, my sister. My, she, that, mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's another and one. And that probably not that dramatic. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she is dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, moving on, I asked for my hundred dollars. Yeah, you, I was gonna say, did you? $100. But did you get your coins? <laughs> <laughs> I got my coins. I got my secured the whole day. Okay. I did it in an hour. <laughs> but the beautiful part of all that crazy was the fact that the doctor said she's so strong. 
Wow. And I said, God, I didn't know what I was going to name her. We oh. were going back and forth about her name. And I said, God, what is a name that means strength? And he said, Brick. Oh. And at that moment, because the doctor said she was so strong that I almost dropped her. Mm. Um, she, she flew out. She forced her way out. And um, oh my goodness. I named her Brittany mm. uh, for that moment because wow. of being strength. And so from that point on, it has been such a journey. So yeah. you had the me, then you had the mother. And then the minister piece of it, like I said, I began to answer the call of my life um, to help a lot of young people mm -hmm. um, come into understanding um, their call yeah. and who God has created them to be, mm. dealing with a lot of identity issues and mm. different things. But um, many times I always say to myself, I don't want to be married, right? Mm. Um, because I didn't want to bring a level of confusion to someone. I didn't want... Um, the, the pain of my past of not really understanding the depth of the grooming or the depth of the molestation. Right. Um, and so I found myself saying, I'll just be single. I'll just do ministry and do nothing else. Right. Mm. Um, but God said, no, <laughs> that's, 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 a, <laughs> that's um, not the plan. So I three years ago, well, it, it'll be three in September, three years ago. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's five years ago. God allowed me to meet a man and we dated for two years and, and got wow. married. Listen, this is the other crazy people <laughs> in it. <Let> me, <laughs> so we we dated for two years. It was a lot of back and forth. We didn't know neither one of us. My husband, Ryan is his name, and um, he had lost his wife um, oh, wow. to sickness and so he was a he was um, a widow in right. a sense. And right. so he had three daughters. I had a daughter um, and so we were going back and forth about, um, really, are we made for each other? Are we going to be friends? And so we went through right. this, this cycle of things, um, you know, in our two years. Mm. But finally, we just said to each other, it's time to go to the next level. Let's not fear what God wants for mm. our lives. Mm. And, and so uh, we actually, he proposed to me on uh, August 30th and we got married September 1st. Listen, oh, that's the crazy Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen. Me too. <laughs> Jared and uh, he proposed to me oh on the 30th and, and then we had a small ceremony on the 1st. Didn't invite no family. Didn't do anything. We just leaked. Whoop. Like Brittany. Our next chapter. <laughs> like Brittany. I said, did Brittany plan that? She said, we leaked. <laughs> Yeah. 
thing for me. Everything else came before. Mm. And but I don't I don't take anything from my journey. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm just saying that that has been my way. That and, is what happened, yeah. Um, but I thank God for for grace and yeah. the ability to minister despite all the pain that I've gone through. So now I've dedicated my life to really and truly helping um women mm. come into their call. And mm. like I said, I'm a stickler for um, shaping and, and coaching women into their calling mm. um, where their their view is not the pulpit. I want mm. people to, you may be called to the boardroom, you may be called right, right. to a podcast, you may be called to write, you may be, and yeah. so I want to be, as a woman, the one that helps other women come into their calling outside of what tradition has said is your calling. Is the calling, yeah. Um, okay. Most people think, yeah, most people think that if I'm a minister or if you call me a minister, then that must mean I'm called to the pulpit. The pulpit, yeah. And so I want to change that paradigm. Come on, come I on. Change that paradigm every day that it, it, it don't have the pulpit as your only view. Yes. There's other streams, there are other uh, venues that God wants to shape you into your calling and yeah. so i mentor women um to mm. do just that I and uh amazing. i license i license women based upon their specific unique call so wow. you're not just a minister me and the whole you know the holy spirit and i help you to discover what god uh purpose you to be as to why you're here on earth Wow. And we help you to answer that question of why i'm here wow and um i license you and ordain you based upon your specific call. Mm. So you may be a minister of finance, mm. or you may be a minister of communication, yeah. or you may be a minister of arts and entertainment, but guess what? You're a minister. You're a minister. But yes. where you minister is where I want to help you Come to on. discover that. And so that has been my call because so many people have shaped women to think that to, met, to be called a minister you have to stand to in the, the pulpit, pulpit. Mm, mm. but I, I, come, to, I Listen. come to shift that and yes that, that yes paradigm. now Sharon have you ever watched Pastor Michael Todd and Transformation Church I have do you know yes, he I, just I, did I a whole him. series on who's the minister here and there was wow. one part where he talked because what you were just saying made me think of this part where he had this whole fence set up on the stage and he said when Jesus went down those three days what he came back up with was the keys to these different areas <clears throat> that the devil has set up camp in finance in entertainment in educate in these different arenas but where he thinks he has gates around these areas we have the keys but we need to go in and minister we need to go in Amen. and let these Amen. people look this thing is open mm -hmm. there ain't even it's not yes, locked yes. i got the keys mm -hmm. it, yes. so yes i am i whether you're ministering at home to those little ones which my mom there were seven of us she was a mm -hmm. minister to all mm -hmm. seven seven little personalities mm -hmm. crazy people <laughs> crazy people <laughs> Those little crazy people, mm -hmm. but I love it. I love it, and we, yeah, me and you, we definitely need to talk because this is, and I know you and I, we haven't talked in so long, so I know my own like journey. Like I said, I said a little before, but I always, I remember singing in the church. I went to church all the time when I was younger. I never had a personal relationship, so what I kind of mm -hmm. fed off of was the energy, the relationships that were being developed around me with my mom, with my parents, or with my pastor, with you guys. And so once I got away from that, I was kind of like, so what was the point of me getting up and going to church? That was just a ritual. You know what I'm saying? It had no backing to it. So, I mean, life really, really kicked my butt a little bit. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole time, but when I look back on it, God never stopped chasing. And I'm just mm -hmm. so grateful that he doesn't stop 
chasing us. And once I got that realization that what he wants from me is a relationship, I mean, in my room, boohooing, crying, just overwhelmed by the love, overwhelmed by the love, overwhelmed by the peace and just keep going, Sharon, because especially your journey and what you went through and this time with these little ones, the message that the devil is pushing to them is a totally different lifestyle, everything. So what you went through was for a purpose at this time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to speak to these little ones. And that's why he said to, you know, um, not to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. Um, that's one of the reasons why he said, I don't want you to pastor from a building. Mm. I don't want you to pastor from a building. Because it will keep the paradigm the same. Mm. And so you're a pastor to women in the marketplace mm. that um, that need. He's like, you can't shift the paradigm if you put it in the same place. Mm. And so you're mm. a pastor to women, you know, and it's not to take away from the local church. Don't, you know, hear me when I say that. Yeah, but yeah. there are women who probably will never step into a church building that need to be pastored. Mm, come on. And so, and, 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 but they have major, major calls on their life yeah. that, you know, the marketplace needs. And so that is your audience. And yeah. that's who I want you to pastor. I want you to pastor them. They need guidance. They need counsel um, in reference to the, the strong call that they have on, that, on their lives. And mm. so um, I said, I have to answer that call. Yeah. You know? And he said, you know, so many women are, mentored by men mm. which is nothing wrong with that right um but why can't you be that woman right that right. they can look up to that they can receive the training from um to come into who they are mm. you be that you yeah be that woman. yeah and, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i'm here for it i'm here for it like yeah. i'm just so excited i think what you're doing is so dope Yes. I just think it's yes. really, really dope. Oh, thank and you so thank you. much. Just, I, you know, I'm just, everybody's stories, they're all different, but at the same, they all come back to that crazy beautiful. Yes. I had all this crazy, mm -hmm. and then God showed me the beautiful in it, yes. you know? Yes, amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Shoot. And, and you know, one thing I hear in the story, out of all the things, I'm sorry, say mm -hmm. it again. Oh, I was just saying, thank you so much for sharing your story. I was really touched, especially when you were talking about when you were five, because I have a five-year-old right now, and so it's constantly on my mind how I'm shaping and growing her mm -hmm. in the direction that she should go, and so it's so powerful to hear such an amazing person talk about how some of the things that shape them to be who they are today started at that age. Yeah. And reinforced my money as a mom. Yeah. Um, the ministry of being a mom to her and like how much that can affect a person. So thank you so much for hearing Amen. that. That really touched me. And, and definitely no problem. The thing about it, what I had to realize, and someone had to mentor me to get me to a place, and that is um, Pastor Cynthia Johnson. She actually was the one that God used mightily and continues to use um, in my life to help me come through um, the healing that, that needed to take place um, because a lot of times people don't realize a lot of the vulnerabilities of a child at five years old, how impressionable they are, yeah. the voices that speak to them and you don't have a way to articulate to parents. And mm -hmm. so um, being very careful about surroundings and people mm -hmm. because my mom, in the pureness of what she was doing, was just making sure that her family could be fed. Right. Um, right. And so she was leaving us in the hands of people, um, not really understanding uh, what was going on. Right. But I didn't know how to articulate that something's wrong here. Yeah. Um, but, it, but when she started to pay attention, she's having, you know, problems in school or, you know, where is this aggression coming from? Right. Or, you know, different things. Pay attention to the mood shift of your yeah. children. Because... A lot of times, it, 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 it is being birthed from a place that so really and truly you don't know what's happening, but it's been happening. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have words to express, so it comes through right. behavior. Yeah, that's true. And moves. That is very true. And so um, many times, and especially in the school system, because I, I, you know a lot of what I do is in mental health and working with children who have 
behavioral issues. Um, that's, you know, a lot of what I see is the teachers or the principals or the parents themselves even, um, they're thinking you're just being bad or right. you're acting out. But, you know, every Deeper. behavior, every extreme behavior is predictable based upon some level of trauma. Yep, it's and just a so symptom. when my mom started to see, you know, me did not even really know him, but when she began to pay attention to, wait a minute, you know, what do you mean she's smart? What do you mean she can't read on right. grade level? What do you mean? Because I was fixated on the pornography that was placed before me. Wow. Wow. So the attention deficit came from trying to process images wow. that were too old for me. Wow. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. That is. And so my attention wasn't there because my mind was fixated on I'm about to see the babysitter in six hours. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. And so I had to process that. You know, mm. I had to process yeah, that. Yeah. Wait a minute. You know, but I'm five. I'm six. I'm seven mm. years old. I was with three different babysitters and over the course of seven to eight years, and every one of them. Wow. Every one of them betrayed me. Wow. Mm. Mm. That is... And you can see that over so you can only imagine my mindset at that time. Yeah. Mm. You know? Um, so pay attention. If I, yeah. if I don't say anything else, pay attention, pay attention to a disruption, an extreme disruption in mood and behavior. Yeah. That is the moment, that's the moment you ask the, the most questions. Right. Um, to help them articulate what is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just acting out. It's yeah. not just being bad, quote unquote bad. Right. It's, that's a there's symptom. something that shifted. Yep. That they can't handle. Yep, yep. And no. offer to be like proactive about that because of everything that's happening with the gymnast. Um, mm -hmm. I actually like started talking to my daughter about like her body parts and what that was mm -hmm. and so I went to pick her up from her babysitter one day and the babysitter pulled me aside and she was like I just want to let you know I haven't done anything to your daughter but she was talking to me about her V and all this other stuff and she was like and she was telling me I, I can't touch that and she was like I don't touch that I don't touch that I don't know where that mm -hmm. came from but I really wanted to make sure, and it was such an awkward and uncomfortable conversation, but I was so happy it happened because it mm -hmm. showed that Ariana was voicing her herself and, and her uncomfortableness about whatever was happening at that moment to the mm -hmm. babysitter in a way to let her know, if you do this, I'm letting my mom know, I'm letting people know because I understand how to articulate this. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sharon, I think another thing that you hit on that... I love is that you said you sought out counsel just to actually process, to help you process that and to heal from the trauma. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that's the other piece of what I do is helping women to be become whole so that you can minister. Yeah. Um, because if you're not healed, when you when you minister, a lot of times you find yourself starting and stopping procrastination kicks in because really and truly a lot of it has to do with lack of healing mm. so i want you to be whole while you minister right it's not just minister yeah yeah and um yeah. we have these major calls we have these major calls in our lives but you need counsel you need coaching you know from someone that yeah. can make sure that while you're ministering you know you're not spewing venom yeah, that's true. Because that's true. of your pain yeah. from the past. And so I mm. take people through inner healing. I take them through identity, you know, so it's not just um, the call, you know, mm. but it's everything that comes with it. You yeah. know, God wants us to bring everything with to us. Him. You know, yeah. like I said, I bring start out saying, you know, I bring me to the table, but me have a lot attached to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I All of us. the beautiful out of the crazy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to just be crazy. You want to be crazy. <laughs> you don't want to get to that place. Because, I mean, we've all, you know. Uh, we, don't want to all. <laughs> we all have those moments. Is it crazy or is it beautiful? It's a little crazy. <laughs> it's a little crazy right now. <laughs> but yes, I just, I, again, we thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing. 
I got so much from it. I'm going to make sure that we link in the description because I know, Sharon, you also do a week or is it daily that on Facebook? Yeah, I have a Facebook group where I post something daily, whether it's uh, worship or um, any of the revelations that God gives me. And the Facebook, excuse me, Facebook group is God's Kingdom Girls. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I'm a part God's of that. Kingdom Girls on Facebook, and like I said, we can go there. And like I said, I post, but I, I teach on Fridays. So I do a Facebook live on fr every Friday. Okay. Um, on whatever you know, whatever uh, subject topic. Holy Spirit leads me to do, but right now we're in the blessing series, but yeah, All right. God's kingdom girls. Yeah, 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 so I'm going to put a link, make sure we link to God's kingdom girls in the description link so you guys can definitely go and check out all that Sharon has going on, and if you felt feel that to connect, connect in that way, and um, Sharon, at this time, this is when we get into the things that God has given us this week. And after okay. which we give like a song or two, if you've been, cause you know, for me, like, and again, we, and the joyful sounds are so weird because it's like, we were there, but I feel like, I don't, I don't know. It's been so long. Um, but for me, music is still like my form of community. Like my mom said, I sang before I talked. <laughs> music is like she's oh, when are you gonna write your story I was like I write my story and my songs like it's honest truth mm -hmm. whatever comes out is that's the yeah. truth <laughs> say the truth you know what I'm saying? so mm -hmm. um but we give a song or two because all I'm telling you I have gotten into not even realizing the power of praise and worship but praise and worship is like mm -hmm. a daily thing for me and I didn't realize this is a wep you this is a weapon that you're employing that mm -hmm. is breaking shackles That's off rare. of you mm -hmm. and anybody who's around you. I'm just, you know, I'm bopping with the Holy Spirit. Like, hey, we bopping, hey, every day. Right. So we always right. give the songs that have kind of kept us going throughout the week. So yeah. who would like to, Sharon, would you like to start with maybe a song of the week or maybe a worship song that's gotten you through this week or... Well, um, I know for me, uh, this week, Something Has to Break by Kiki Shear. Um, oh, I love Kiki. <laughs> has been, yeah, I love the Clark sisters and anybody in past year, But, um, yeah, Something Has to Break. I love that song by Kiki Shear because oh. in the, um, the unrest that the country is experiencing, I was like, God, something has to break yeah. here. And so that song has been ministering to me this week based upon all the reports and, you know, the rioting and, you know, yeah. the death of black men has been um, unsettling, unnerving for me <laughs> this particular week, especially. Um, it's, it's been happening. Mm. Um, and so it really that's been my cry. God, something, something has, has to, to break. break. God, keep shared it. So I've been playing that this week. Oh, cool. All right. So what we're going to do um, is I'm going to pause okay. the podcast and we'll listen to something has to break. And then if mm -hmm. Sharon is able to stick around, she can stick around. You can stick around with us and experience some more of our crazy beautifulness. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> we'll be right back after this. But again, something has to break by Kiki Sheard. That will also be posted in the description below and we'll be right back you guys still there hey, that amazing yes, amazing yes, yes. Awesome. awesome thank you Sheila. yeah 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 so beautiful mm. oh, so ladies Now, I did want to, I had a couple of scriptures that came that like were working on me this week. And one of which, when Sharon was talking, Mark 5, 34, he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. That, again, we're back to the issue, the woman with the blood. And 
I was watching a message by Pastor Stephen Burdick the other day, and he was talking about the fact of the way that Jesus prioritized things in that moment. To the world, they would have said he placed the wrong thing first with the woman touching him and stopping to figure out who touched him and her healing that it should the little girl should have been his first priority because that's where he was being pushed to this is but something pulled on him and his whole message was you know answer the pull go into the pool because the world right now is pushing us in a lot of different directions and this message was from a couple years ago it was still you know he had no idea that we'd be where we are today, but God did. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I was looking at that, I was like, man, we are, I mean, being pushed, look at this, look at that, do this, do that. And I had said to my mom, we've been having, con we, all, we have conversations every day. <laughs> but I said, you know, I knew with this podcast happening today and everything that's happened throughout this week, I was like, God, I don't want to speak unless you tell me what to say. I don't want to speak off emotion. I don't want to speak off of my own will. You know, like, this is what I feel. And I really, for a day or so, like, I hadn't said much about what was going on or anything because he hadn't given me anything. And I know, like we said, you know, your words do have power. Um, and so today, I was thinking about this show that me and the girls used to watch. The show is garbage. <laughs> it is garbage! It was called... Was <laughs> this is promising, right? <laughs> Y'all already know. So, it was this show called The Bad Girls Club. And... I was like, Lord, we should not have, and they should not have been watching that. And watch this, God said, but I'm going to use it. On the Bad Girls Club, they would have these women who were where they were in their journey, you know, like, woo, we're out here, we're doing whatever. But often, when they placed them in this house, there would be a girl who would have a very manipulative spirit. So her whole thing would be to plant little ideas and thoughts in two different girls' minds. She would just pick two and be like, ooh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm make sure I'm gonna, ooh, did you see what she, did you see how she did that? But the girl who was doing the manipulating, she never ended up fighting. Who ended up fighting was the other two girls who actually didn't even have an issue with each other. But because they got so wrapped up in whatever story she painted, they didn't realize that they were being manipulated and moved until they got to the reunion special and then everybody wanted to fight her and she had security. And so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about just the state of where we are and it's a lot of, well, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. And I'm like, man, this is not, this is spiritual warfare on a whole nother level. This is not a mortal fight. This is not a mortal fight. And for everyone whatever it is that you're feeling led to do just make sure that it's the lord that's leading you to do it i can't tell you what that is because i'm not him but i'm just saying whatever that is make sure that he's the one leading you because if he's not baby there's somebody keeping you busy and moving you around for no reason even if it looks as if you know but i'm doing this for the good for good da -da -da -da. and god said but that's not what i told you to do that is not what I told you to do, but don't even trip if you, at that moment when you feel convicted and be like, man, I was moving off my emotion. Don't even trip because God could use all that and he could still turn it around and use you in that moment. So yes, there are some of us who are being called to do things. There are some of us who have been called, being called to just pray. If that's what you've been called to do, please do not. Cause in this world, especially with social media, you, we, we bully each other a lot. And so you need to be, you should be saying and doing and da, 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 da. That's only if that's what God called me to do. And I'm sorry, 
But if what he called me to do is different from what you feel I should be doing, I'd rather you be mad at me than him. Sorry, not sorry. Cue Demi Lovato. But it's just, again, more of, I cannot tell anybody what to do, how to move, how to, all I can say is seek him, go talk to him. And does he answer? Yes, he does. And does he tell you how to move? Yes, he does. But the crux of the situation is, do you believe that there is a God? Okay, I believe there's a God, but do you believe what he says? There's a lot of people, I believe in everyone. I believe that everyone can do whatever. I believe that you can, you. but there, do I believe what everybody says? No. No. But when it comes to my father and this book and what, and I can only go off of my own personal experience, my own journey, and I'm putting all my weight on him. I'm rocking with him. If he says, and it's not always easy, a lot of times it's going away from the crowd. Yeah. yeah. And you feel like this is not what everybody else is doing, but he has proven, he showed and proved for me in my life. And for everyone else, I can only, you got it. It's your own journey. It's your crazy, beautiful journey. But for me, I'm putting all my weight on him. Yeah. And so that is just my prayer for everyone. I want clarity. I want peace. Yeah. And just to really, really let him. Because I always tell the girls, there's no person that was placed on this earth without a purpose. Every person is an answer to a question. There's a question that's not being answered right now and won't be till you step in that room. So keep keep going and keep your focus in the right direction. So, okay, I said all, I know I'm going on and on. So the focus thing. <laughs> Earlier this week, I ended up in my um, devotion looking at the journey of the children of Israel. And Sharon... The way I read the Bible is really, like, crazy. Like, the stuff that I'll be like, oh my gosh, mom, David said strap up. So, <laughs> this week, <laughs> when I got him to, I was shocked that I was like, David said get your strap. Like, I mean, he meant his sword, just, but, you know, strap up. <laughs> so, the right. children of Israel. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So I'm looking at the children of Israel. Now, when Moses initially sent the spies in, and I was reading through the journey of the spies with Moses, and they were there for a month, they didn't go through anything. They walked around with the branch. They the pulled grapes. some fruit. and they, they didn't go through anything. And their report when they came back, was all bad and all negative. Like, yeah, the land does have milk and honey, but there was this, and we're ants, and we're and it was a grasshopper mentality. It was their perspective. Now the spies that Joshua sent actually went through something. They actually had to hide up in the top of Rahab's house, and they actually went through something. But when they came back, they said it's all good. Let's go take this land. It was only because they believe what God said. Right. Right, right. That was it. And I was like, oh, okay. So either we have grasshopper mentality or we have promised land mentality. With the grasshopper mentality, God only so long until he's like, okay, your kids are going to go to the promised land. That's where the Israelites were. Mm -hmm. You're going to continue to believe in yourself and everything else. So I will go ahead and do what I got to do through your children. And that, ooh, I was just sitting there like, ooh, Okay, so my verse of this week is Numbers 1330. All of that. If you guys really want to get into it for yourself, those verses are in Numbers 13, 27 through 30. And then Joshua 2, 24 is where the spies came back and what where they gave their report. But Numbers 1330, Caleb silenced the people at once and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are able to overcome it. 
the giants aren't the problem. It's your focus. And Caleb is one of the ones that the Lord allowed to go. When everybody else died, he said Caleb can go. But they actually just really made God mad because he's like, you don't believe what I say. You say you believe in me, but you don't believe what I say. I told you that this land was yours and I told you to go. I told you I'd go before you and you're doubting me. I've made food froth from the sky. Like, I don't... I don't. <laughs> Sharon, I, I struggle with the children of Israel. They get on my nerves sometimes, but I understand that I am them <laughs> at times. <laughs> I'm like, it don't, I mean, it doesn't get any realer. Like, he made food fall from the sky, water from a rock. Like, y'all walking through the sea. I don't understand what more you need to believe <laughs> that I got you. Like, you're still walking around like, I don't know. I don't know. God might be taking a nap. Like, Come on. <laughs> Come on. But that was my, my thing for this week is more of him just saying, make sure you keep your perspective on me and make sure that, you know, listen to my voice. And when I speak, believe, believe what I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, what I've written to you in my word, yeah. believe me. That still small voice. Mm. He, God doesn't yell no, at us. No, he does not. He does not yell at us and he's loving us through it all mm. um, but I'm gonna I'm stop going on and on and on because I like every week there's so much and I keep saying that I need to do like little posts throughout the week yeah you should do that she oh <laughs> wait a minute hold on <laughs> All right, so we're going to get to the songs, my song of the week, because apparently, <laughs> no, that was no but yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I definitely, <laughs> no, gosh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys, who want, do you guys want to share songs or? Well, Kiara, why don't you go first? Because my phone is on the table, so. Okay, um, so I do a devotional, like, every single day. I absolutely love my devotional for anyone who would like to know which one I'm using. It's Jesus is Calling by Sarah Young. Um, my mom actually got this for me, and it is an awesome, awesome devotional. So she kind of um, takes God's Word and applies it to our lives in, like, a digestible and actionable way. So... Um, two verses this week that really stood out to me happened to be in Colossians. So it was Colossians 2 and Colossians 3. In Colossians 2, 6 through 7, it reads, um, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And with what I've gone through this week, you know, um, there's definitely a lot of emotional, it's an emotional roller coaster to be in a pandemic, um, period. And so, like, that is definitely what I've experienced this week, especially um, with a little one. She has her good days, she has her bad days, and then mm-hmm. working, um, balancing all that out. It, is, it has its roller coasters, but when God reminds me, like, she's the same, to focus on being thankful, my heart definitely is lighter and happier um, when I go through each day. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing, with all the bad news that I've been hearing, the other um, Colossians verse that I love this week was Colossians 3.12, which is, um, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And um, I just I want to like shout that to people because there's so many things I'm seeing are like, so negative, and mm-hmm. um, God made us all, you yeah. know, and He didn't make anybody by mistake. And there is so much beauty in each person, and it just kills me to see us fighting and killing each other right. the way that we have been doing that, um, and creating this world of like uncertainty and fear through trying to, you know, just get the best for ourselves in some cases versus others so um those are like two verses that really spoke to me um mm-hmm. and just wanted to again just remind people to walk with kindness and love 
um, with each other and have compassion for each other. Amen. In the way that people are going through things, because somebody might, you know, God, like, as we talked about within our, our little group, there might be ways that God has spoken to one person that's not the way that he's spoken to you mm-hmm. and the way in which they should move. And just have compassion for them. Like, if you don't understand it, okay, just have compassion for him, pray for him, don't attack him. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, Do not exploit their weakness. Yeah, don't um, exploit their weakness. And my songs are all back songs. I've really been into, like, 90s Christian music recently. That's kind of, like, my jam. Um, and it's so funny that we were talking about a calling, because one of my songs this week is actually the call from Anointed. Anointed. Ah, uh, I love Anointed. And then, um... It's so funny that you guys, because I know you guys sang together in the 90s, so um, I'm sure you all really? remember when the Spirit of the Lord from Fred Hammond. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Song. Actually, yes. Sharon. <laughs> the 90s, so right there in the store back. Um, we don't want to listen to both, but those are my two songs this week. <laughs> All right, Sharon, were you with us when we went to that Fred Hammond concert at, um, what was the name of that church? Um... The big church. Oh, Evangel? Yeah, Evangel. Evangel. We went mm-hmm. to a Fred Hamp. That was so fun. Yeah, I, was. And, uh, I was like, yeah. and that is actually... Well, I love Fred Hammond. So. Yes. I love Fred Hammond. Okay, the spirit. Okay, that we'll listen to so much fun. the spirit of the Lord. I, yeah. I actually <laughs> met Fred Hammond around that time, mm-hmm. and my mom got on me because, like I said, I was always super quiet and... Like, oh my gosh. And at the time, I don't know if I even, I know I told Jeremy, there was this other group that, I don't even know how I met that guy, but the guy, years and years later, being older, I now realize the guy was trying to talk to me, but he was like, oh, I want you to come sing in my group. He had never heard me sing. And I was like, okay. And and his way of trying to woo me to their group was he was like yeah because we're they were based out of evangel and he was like fred hammond is coming and i can get you in to meet him and he did i was sitting at the table with fred hammond and fred hammond was there to answer any questions that we had about just the gospel music industry and um just the ministry of gospel music and do you know what i asked him nothing absolutely nothing (laughs) i was scared (laughs) scared to talk i felt bad because i felt like he had he was trying to finish his food and they kind of like snatched his food away because we had to come in there and ask him questions and i was like this is this is so awkward and i just sat there i don't even remember what they asked him i remember he did he was he was very soft-spoken and very kind and i remember him making jokes and stuff but yeah that was my my chance my mom was like you you weren't singing in the background or anything i said no i didn't sing anything i just singing in the background (laughs) okay but we're gonna get into fred ham and the spirit of the lord and we'll be right back oh that is a good one fred hammond and we were mentioned we were just talking about when we paused it Fred Hammond and Kirk Franklin are doing a versus battle tomorrow at five o'clock on Instagram. So if anybody is interested to check that out, I love the battles. I think it's just, it's really nostalgic. You know, it's just like, (laughs) oh, oh, they got, and I, the one I was like really getting into was Neo. And I don't know who the other guy was, but he has written a lot of hit songs. And Neo, I said, Neo, you got to stop picking yourself. He kept picking the songs he wrote for himself. And I was like, uh, not so much. I mean, he has some good ones, but you know. <laughs> so, Mom. Well, you, do you know, I'm sure he's an avid listener of our podcast. Oh, my gosh. No. Sam. Yeah, Neo. <laughs> but, okay, so, Mom, do you want to go or do you want me to go? You can go and then I'll get my phone and I'll go. Okay. All right. So, this week... As always, I have some interesting songs, oh, but I'm not, I'm not going to play the, I know mom was like, please don't play the hip, the boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> but anyways, there is a song, but it's a new Christian rap artist. I think his name is Rockstar or something, but it's called three, six. And he's talking about it's him and no big deal. And Joey Ventas. 
a couple of the other like um christian rap artists and they're just there sharing their story of like the music they used to listen to but then they kind of flip it and talk about how like how they're walking today and how they're reaching out to the kids today and i think it's really cool plus for us being nostalgic the artists that they mention you're like oh yeah i definitely listen to them <laughs> And so it's a really good one. So I'll post that in the description. I think the song that I will play this week is um, Dear God mm. by, and I forget the dude's name. I'm going to have to look it up and give you guys the guy's name. But it is one that he actually recorded during this quarantine time. Mm. He recorded it at home and he's, he's linked with Hillsong and he recorded it with his him and his guitar he sent it over to hell song but this song has been one that i've been listening to quite a bit every now and then because it really hits so we're gonna listen to dear god and we will be right back as we were listening to the song it it made me think of mike my brother mike and um today I only jumped on Facebook very briefly. I haven't been doing much social media. Uh, you know, I get on there every now and then. But the memory that popped up today was from our family trip four years ago in Florida. And it was when the girls were passed out sleep in the morning and me and Mike, I was snapping pictures of him over top of them being silly. And in the last picture... Kiara, you had posted, and this is three years ago, she posted under there, Michael, that looks creepy. And I responded to her and said, he told me he was partying with them in their dreams. And so I, and Sharon, I don't know if you know, but my, my little brother Michael was killed in a car accident a couple years ago. And so when I read that this morning, I just cried. Wow, okay. And, no, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he, but that's wow. what he said to me because he was really goofy and silly, and he was really good at the guitar. Like he would just pick the guitar up and come at you, and be like, "Sing something, sis." And that that was kind of his style, yeah. like the song we just listened to. But yeah, he was over them, and I I remember I was taking the pictures, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And he was like, I'm partying with them in their dreams, bro. <laughs> and so I was just like, you know, party on, Mike. Party on. But, yes, Dear God by Corey Ashbury is an amazing song. It's kind of a um, question and answer because at the beginning it's you or any you talking about just being in your own head and seeking the approval of people and just the struggles that we all, the different struggles we might go through. And then God's response just of how much he loves us and how he doesn't change. Um, so that's a good one. I'll link it in the description. And mom, what is your, can I tell you about her looking for this song today? She is like, I think that's the song. And I'm like, I mean, have you heard the song? Are you picking out a song that somebody told you about? And she said, no. Oh, that's the one. But she had just never seen the person who sang the song. No. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, um, I don't know if you guys know of him. Um, he was a international minister. His name was Ravi Zachariah. Um, Ravi Zachariah passed away May 19th. And his memorial service, celebration service, was yesterday. And it was so beautiful. But I have to tell you guys this, the final of <laughs> Ravi, uh, his funeral, actually he was asking for things, you know, before he passed. And the final person in his celebration was um, Lecrae. Lecrae. And it was so awesome. It was so awesome. Because the thing about Ravi Zechariah um he was a very loving uh minister he wanted to hear what everyone's point was 
regardless of how off or how different it was, he he wanted to hear it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't cut people off. He didn't, you know, he would answer with the answers that he knew and he would go through it and this is the first thing that I heard you say and this this wasn't quite right from my understanding where I stand and with my worldview and the Christian worldview and he would explain why but he wouldn't demand that that's the view that you have to take right he would leave it to the person to think about so I just I just thank God for Ravi Zachariah because what he did is he left a whole a huge ministry all over this world that is now taking off mm. in mighty ways but the one thing that I wanted to say there is a scripture when Ravi was I think he said he was 17 he lives in India um, and he tried to commit suicide mm. and while he was in the hospital after his attempt he was laying in the bed and a nurse brought in the, a Bible he was not a believer his mom was not a believer they weren't you know they weren't believers but his mom started to read in the Bible and the verse that hit home for Ravi Zachariah. I have to look it up here. Um, I think it was John. Let me get to it. It was John. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, this happened this morning when I was with that. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it in. Um, yes. It, okay, let me see here. And I asked him what I was supposed to do. Um, no. Oh my gosh, I cannot. Do you remember the... It was John 14. Let me see if I can just find it. Um, John 14. Mm -mm. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Well, I'll find it as we are listening to the song. Okay. okay? Um, the song that I wanted to listen to was um, What Sin by Calvin Hunt. Was that his name? No, his name was oh, something no. different. Now, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll look up the song and then we'll let you know. <laughs> she was like, oh, no. Another it's song is going to play. But yes. it's called What I was going to say. say. Yes. So we will be back in one About second this song. after we um, listen to What Sin. I used to go to the altar just about once every, at least every three months or whatever because I felt like I needed to rededicate and get myself back together. Um, and what God showed me is he's not getting back up on the cross. When he died on the cross, he did that once for all. He died for all of our sins. So for us to bring up our sins is like denying what he did. He would want us to look to him and not look to our sin. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that. Amen. I truly thank God for that. Because I'm serious. I mean, there were so many times I was like, I got to go back to the altar because... I, you know, this sin and the sin and that song right there. Wait a minute. What sin? Mm. What sin? What sin is greater than what I have done for you? I want you to be reminded of 
who and what I have done. I have covered that, but you need to be reminded of me and what I have done. Mm -hmm. And that is greater than anything. If you rest in what I have done, mm. you can walk and be free. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. What's yeah. it? And I didn't find and the scripture. Tracy will put it in the, um, um, so far as in the description. In the description. Below, She'll put after. in the, the um, scripture. I couldn't get it because you know how your phones work and you're like da 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 and I had it in there. And, yeah, fine. Uh, fine. Yeah, but I just thank God. Yes. For... Oh, and the name of the gentleman who sings that song is What's In by Cryer Morgan or Morgan, Morgan Cryer. Cryer. Yes. My bad, Morgan crying. <laughs> but um, we're going to let you guys get out of here because I know we've dragged on a little bit. Probably my fault. But um, we, we are going to watch. <laughs> to close out our Bible study, what we'll be watching is Pastor Darius Daniels. The last of his Hidden Figures series this week. He started on Mother's Day. And I don't know, Sharon, have you ever heard of Dr. Darius Daniels? Sharon? I'm sorry. I was on mute. Uh, I told you, if you want to go left. Uh, yes, I have. I said, yes, oh, I thought Sharon I said. I was talking on mute because I didn't want to go <laughs> She said, girl, I got to go, girl. Yes, ma'am, right? <laughs> but that's what we are going to. And what we usually do is I will just... I'll link it in the description, but I'll give the the site of the message to you and Kiara so you guys can look it up if you want and watch it. And me and mom are going to be watching it here. Yeah. Um, but it's a pretty powerful message, and it's about Mary Magdalene and how she was quietly one of Jesus' main ride or dies. Yeah. And, um, and also, I wanted you to post Ravi Zacharias. Um, um, his celebration Memor day. Okay. Um, the service. So if anyone wants to watch that, okay. it's um, yeah. We will do that. We will post the service for Ravi Zacharias. Will be in the description as well for you guys to check out. And he, what from what my mom has told me, he was a very amazing man of God, and he definitely allowed the Lord to use him while he was here and is having a good old celebration right now. Yeah. So we are going to close out in prayer. Does anybody feel led to pray? Sharon, can you oh, pray? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. She said, oh, I was praying on mute. <laughs> 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 Don't yeah. All right. Yeah. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come and just sit and listen to what it is that you have for our lives and speak into the different vessels that you've used today. I thank you for all of the worship and the songs of praise that were lifted up and were highlighted today. I thank you for Crazy Beautiful Life and I thank you for every one that um, had anything to do with the development, any of the vision. We know that you give vision, oh God, and mm -hmm. provision will come. So I thank you, God, for every listener that will hear what was spoken today, that it would take it, um, take away from it practical life lessons mm -hmm. that will allow them to feel inspired, to feel encouraged, to feel challenged, to go to the next level and turn, turn the pages to the next chapter of their mm -hmm. lives. So we thank you, mm -hmm. oh God, as we gather today, that you would allow our hearts to um, never forget what was spoken, mm -hmm. that we would meditate upon it. We thank you for the lives. Uh, that you're constantly using to change the world. And so, oh God, we thank you that we have no um, hopelessness. Yeah. There is no restlessness in us. Amen. But we come just truly uh, believing that you're going to do greater and that all things work together for good. So Amen. we thank you for Amen. even the crazy, beautiful lives that you have created amongst those who have produced this podcast. Continue to allow it to have success uh, and great success. 
uh, in the world that others will come to know who you are, the true and living God. So we thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get out of here. And I mean, oh, I forgot to mention this. Y'all know I have been struggling with the whole weight loss journey for a minute. So I was really like, Lord, I need you. Because this is, I mentioned this. I was like, everybody is so worried about Corona. I said, I'm just trying to live, get my own health together. Like beyond Corona. Because, I mean, girl. Um, But I was really, really like, Lord, I mean, help me. And can I tell you guys that this week, my taste buds changed like that. Like, it was not me. It wasn't wow. me saying, I don't want to eat this. I don't. And mom can attest all of a sudden, like if anybody wanted to order out or get anything out, I was like, Ooh, that salad just looks so bomb. Like out of nowhere. Cause before I'll be like, Ooh, yeah, that salad's really good. Trying to force myself to eat it. Now I've been like desire, the desires of my heart have changed and I am excited like God is good, man. You're not pregnant, right? <laughs> For salad? Does that even make sense? Mom. Thank you, Kiara. I mean, say that a little louder for the people in the back. I love it. I love it. What? <laughs> about the power of words. Right. <laughs> I mean, and I'm on, trying mom. to lose weight and you like But I I thank him so much because only God could have done it. Only he could have done it. Like, I was just like, Lord, I don't I don't know what to do at this point. Like, but it really, and, you know, the kids are at an age where they're like, oh, I want this or want that. And my, my husband's one who can eat whatever. So I'm like, I can't keep eating pizza every night. And when I say he took that taste away and I, so I only say, oh, taste and see. That's hilarious, huh? Mm -hmm. Try him, try him. And you guys have an <laughs> a awesome week. And Sharon, we have to link. So I'll get with you after. Yes, And I got you. Yes, yes. I love you guys so much. Yes, we love you. Have a beautiful, love you all as well. blessed week. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>